So one thing I've been meaning to do, beta blockers in here. Get the vitamins in one as well. Put the bandages in one. Same with the eraser, the pen and the scissors, and the needle. Cool. I um, need to check on her gender or anything. That's half of why I came back. Just, you know. Yeah, so generator actually needs to be repaired. Because if you do let your generator fall into too much of disrepair, it can catch fire, and then, you know, that's bad. You don't want your generator on fire, it's bad for your generator and everything in the surrounding area. That's how your base goes down in flames. That said, it's a low chance. And it doesn't start happening till around like 25% chance, or like 25% repair, but you don't want to take your chances getting anywhere near that. Alright, we got fog. Is that today or tomorrow? It looks like it might be a tomorrow thing. That sounds like a tomorrow problem. Oh, and at this point, the prediction is over. We didn't take an injury. So we have survived. So choosing the outcome. Do we survive the helicopter? Yes. So congratulations on all those who gained a bunch of points. And sorry for all those who lost points. Two hundred and eleven point one thousand points. It looks like Whistlebeak may have been the one who bid the most. Because it does say, you know, Whistlebeak and others, so I'm assuming it chose whoever. It happens. Hi, lots of zombies. Hey, don't you hit my wall. Don't you do it. Oh, you are beyond dead. Well, at least you're kind enough to deliver me a hunting knife. Alright, we got another zombie all the way over there. Oh, one back here too. Let's just do a quick patrol around the house. It's been a very long time since we've done that. And seeing this many zombies this close to the house, I feel like that's due. Probably zombies that got moved around because of the helicopter. Is that a panda? I'm not sure what you're talking about. What, what what do you have there? Oh, Brenda, get out of here.
You know, considering we're 10 days into December, the fact that we still don't have snow on the ground is pretty disappointing. Like, November we got little splotches of snow here and there, and then it get hot like a day or two later and it all melt. Oh yeah, it's like... It's like, looks like a panda wearing a pair of sunglasses and a leather jacket. Huh. I don't like those trees. Ah, interesting. And I want to check in here because I didn't check to see if the fish are fresh. Let's see if any of the produce or fish or anything like that isn't fresh because that means I need to use it right away. Okay, cool. Those are still all fresh. Those are all fresh. Um, those are all fresh. Those are all fresh. Cool. So we don't have anything to worry about there. Well, oh, did I top off my veggies? I'm actually in good posture at the moment. I haven't been the best this stream about posture, but in this very second, I'm in good posture. Tomb has asked me if she has a good posture, of which I said, I don't know, do you? And she doesn't know. Oh, we've got a hydrate, I'll do that. And a stretch. Cool. Hydrate is done. So that, like, maybe in the next 15, 20, 30 minutes, another redemption will become available because it'll be 24 hours since the last redemption kind of thing, if that makes sense. Because... My understanding is we've cashed in 35 push-ups this stream. And the cap is supposed to be 50. But it is entirely possible juggling, you know, keeping up with chat, making sure we we do the not die, um, and everything else. It is totally possible that I just forgot to record that I did the push-ups. On the other hand, we do know for a fact if anyone does, in the next couple hours, cash in more push-ups, then we know it is like a 24-hour sliding thing, which actually wouldn't be that bad, because that does mean people later in the stream usually will get to have some redemptions that way. Alright, so I'm thinking, it's been a long time since we've done this, it's probably too late in the day for us to go driving all the way up back to the resort, it's supposed to be foggy tomorrow, so I figure we kill these zombies and we turn on some Wii Woos and see what shakes out, and, you know, make sure Ekron remains clear. Because we cleared it, like, three separate times, and then had, like, hundreds of plus zombies just go, no, it's ours again. We're taking it back. Gotcha. Yeah, there's, um, each individual only gets two redemptions per stream, or whatever the, the cutoff is for what resets. And this is why I use the advanced, you know, thing. Thing with a follow, insane kid 357 Welcome to the stream. And this is one of the reasons why I use the advanced audio mod. I don't use it to turn up any of the sounds in-game for me, because that's kind of cheating. What I do is for sounds that are super annoying to listen to for extended period of times so when they're really loud, I turn them way down. So, like, the splash when you're uh, spearfishing I turn way down. The, uh, the wee-woos I turn way down. 
because the people are trying to chill, get a little sleep, calm down after a stressful day. Police sirens, not, not the best fit for that. And these are just the zombies that have, you know, over time migrated into the area. So we just gotta do this occasionally, clear out the zombies that show up. Someday they'll stop. So, eight katanas? <laughs> this will be our fourth katana in a week. This, this stream, this will be our fourth katana. The cartoon Samurai Jack. That, that was until like 2000 something, right? I'm pretty sure that was like early 2000s. Like 2002, 2001, something like that. I was gonna try and crack a joke about, you know, Samurai Jack convention or something being in town when we showed up or whatever, but then it's like, oh wait, never mind, 1993. Bullets for that? Fine, I'll take your bullets. 2001? Yeah, it's like I knew it was somewhere around there. Um, where is the katana? Well, that was a meat cleaver. I mean, I'll take it. Looks like a hunting knife or some weapon here. No, I guess not. Oh, okay. It heard the sirens and it turned around. I was like, I don't, I don't think we killed the one with the katana, but yeah. But what am I doing? I think I have more. Um, Get out that crowbar. This is all, uh, also strong evidence about migration stuff because, you know, we determined that katanas don't show up till two months in. Which means it has to be a zombie we wasn't in the area or spawned in the last, you know, in the first two months, and we started this town, so. We ran the whole length of the town, so it's gotta be a zombie that was farther up. Alright, there's the katana.
trying to think of something that would be like a convention or something that you'd have in the area that'd be like why everyone would be running around with katanas. Yeah, good quality. Almost all our katanas have been right around there where it's been like four-fifths quality or something like that. Yeah, I'd still call Ekron clear, because, I mean, sure, we've had to kill, what, 30 zombies or so? Considering I'm sitting here with police sirens blasting the whole time, that's, that's not much. That's, you know, two, maybe three hordes have wandered in the air, into the area. That's about the most, most you can hope for. Oh yeah, because you also had like, Power Rangers was the thing at the time, um, like there's a whole bunch of shows like Samurai Pizza Cats, ah, uh, Pulp Fiction would be later I think, that'd be either very late 90s or early 2000s, like it had to be at least 98. Pulp Fiction is 94, okay. Yeah, that's just trying to think is like the, um, stuff like Jackie Chan stuff, but usually they don't use, like, Jackie Chan wouldn't use a, uh, a katana. But, um, what do we do? It's only three, it's... Yeah, no, it's like, the katanas in this game, it's like, okay, that's like a real katana, as opposed to, you know, some, some like, renaissance fair, one we joked about earlier, like, some renaissance fair, you know, cheap bow replication would not, like, it'd just disintegrate after a while. I'm doubting you'll see any zombies in here, because we were blasting the police iron right next door. True. Like, flat out broken, I would agree. I mean, I don't know, because, like, how many people would an actual katana be used on? Like, if we're being objective. Because I would say, like, you know, uh, Renaissance Fair slash uh, Comic Con kind of katana, like just a showpiece and all that, would just, like, it wouldn't even cut through stuff effectively. Yeah, I, I honestly don't know. True, but they also have this game has no mechanic for um for sharpening, which you know is probably something they could do. So maybe the idea is that the katana just gets so dull that it's blunt and it's no longer you know cutting; it's just smashing things, and then it breaks because it's not properly done. So like you know the handle becomes undone or something. 
Like, not like the full steel breaks, it just it starts to come apart kind of thing. Yeah, I don't know. I'm sure there's, like, YouTube channels where they show, like, the entire thing where they go into the durability, go through, like, all of the, um, all of the stuff. Because I, I really enjoy those because they'll, um, do actual, like, stress tests with metal and all that. And people will be like, this is worth, you know, thousands of hits and all that. It's like, actually, this thing's terrible. Like, they go into stuff like bulletproof vests. It's like, actually, bulletproof vests are kind of really only good for a hit per ceramic tile, so, you know. That'd be an interesting. I'm assuming, well, you said it's a comp competition, so I assume they would do stuff like that, that they would stress test where, you know, they'd have the different weapons or whatever, and then they go, okay, well, now we're going to use, like, a robotic arm or something to reliably apply the same amount of force behind this against something else and see if it, you know, holds up or if it shears or whatever. That'd be an interesting show to watch. Like a, a blacksmithing competition show. Yeah, no, obviously they, they're going to upscale. It's like, there's been a few shows I've enjoyed that, you know, they get a little over the top at times, but ultimately the competition part I like. Like, that's one of my big complaints is, you know, you have a lot of the reality kind of competition shows I just can't get into because it's so over the top, but then you're like, okay, well, this show is, you know, literally about taking people of a certain skill and putting them head to head, and they're judging based on very specific professional things or you know, completing the task in a timely manner, whatever the thing is. You're like, okay, so there's all this drama, but it doesn't mean anything. Oh, yeah, I miss Mythbusters. Yep. It's a shame. Mythbusters got a whole generation super hyped about science. Like, they didn't even know they are hyped about science, but just the silly stuff they would do. And it got people excited and watching it and engaged. Like, how many people we have that are into, you know, science, engineering, all those kind of things nowadays? Like, obviously we can't point all of it and say that was Mythbusters doing, but the fact that there was such an increase, Mythbusters played a, a significant part in making it exciting and engaging. Oh yeah, Burn and Sun, yep. Yeah, that's one of those kind of things. That was, um, there was a competition show, I think it was called something like Top Shots or whatever, and I didn't like at one point it got to be, like originally it wasn't voting, it was like a competition just flat out, but then they added like a voting aspect to it and I hated that part because it became, you know, ex-military boil it, you know, bullying whoever was the civilian person who was actually keeping up with them. Yep, everything's doing good. So they add, like, all the garbage, like, that you have to earn immunity and all that crap. And, like, or, hear me out, you just present a challenge that's very different from your previous challenge each day. And the bottom one or two drop out. And so it becomes this thing of just, you need to be good at a little bit of everything. None of this voting crap.
Well, and it becomes strategic in those games. So it's like, okay, if you're if you're doing a competition that you're based on a skill, and that show is about marksmanship, but they'd they'd give them, like, you'd have you know pistols and rifles and all that, but then they'd be like, all right, here's an addle addle. Now you need to hit these targets. Okay, we want you to precision shoot a Tommy gun. You know things that make no sense. I mean, an addle addle makes sense, but things that you know a person wouldn't normally have trained in. And like I, I liked that because you'd have these people who are like, you know, oh, I'm this whatever mark, you know, sniper whatever. It's like great. This is a show about ha being good at like all the different things. And so I'd be like, all right, do a slingshot. But in those type of competitions, if you were smart, you'd get all the other people to be like, hey, this person's clearly the best shot. When it comes to the end, the first time they don't win immunity, vote them out so they can't compete. And I'm like, I don't like that. I would rather they just compete. Uh, Brennan Sun says, well, with this, they take the weapons and they swing them at dummies or whatever, then bash them against something hard to damage the weapon, then back to stabbing something, and it's judged by the three people running it. A lot of them break or bend or whatever, and then you go a little bit into why. Yeah, that makes sense. Like, part of me wishes more precise. That it wasn't just, hey, we're going to go give Tony your sword and we're going to let him, you know, take all the swords and then beat on dummies and see which ones get the most beat on. Because to me, that's not... The, the lack of precision there, it's like, oh, well, what happens if, like, Tony had a much better swing on this one than that one? Well, that's going to err into whether or not you did well. Oh yeah, Ray Mock it, it was it was funny because they had like they'd have one where it's like, okay, here's a target, it's a mile away, hit it with a sniper rifle. And you know you have all the people doing this it, like, alright, well, here's throwing knives, but you need to throw the throwing knives while you're crossing these like little stepping stones in water that are moving or whatever. So you're like doing precision throws while moving. And then, you know, addle-addles and using bows and all sorts of stuff. And it was just funny because you could very clearly see the stuff people were comfortable with and stuff that's like, I'm trying to figure out how to do this right now in the middle of the competition. Which they would give them and be like, one day they'd get to practice with the thing before they actually had to compete and they'd have, you know, an actual coach with them. They'd be like, no, here's how you, how you do this thing. Here's how you aim it. But they'd only get one day practice, so it was very much adjusting to whatever crap they gave you. Which, which was fun, because like when you're doing something that's keeping your competitors all within their comfort zone, to me that's not it's like, okay, but that's, that's, that's not entertaining competition. Make it hard. It was also interesting, they did like a relay race thing where they would have the rifle, they would do some precision thing, then they'd have to take it to their next teammate, who would then have to do a thing, and they take it to the next teammate, and that would do the next thing, you know, rinse and repeat. But for some of the people who were like ex-military, it was very difficult because like the idea of leaving their gun for the next person was just something they, like, because you know you're trained never to do that, like leave your weapon behind kind of thing. That they had multiple of them just... 
grabbed their gun and kept running with it, and it's like, no, your gun has to be there for the other person. It's like, uh... <laughs> you know, it's been drilled into them so much, it's, it's programmed at that point. Which isn't a negative thing or anything, it's just that's... It was something that became a disadvantage to them in the competition. Rainbow Team says, The funny thing about medieval bows is that most people these days cannot pull some old bows as they were weighted for people that used them day in and day out. Yeah, because, I mean... Back in those times, you, you hunted to survive still. Like, yes, there was farming and all that, and they would store it, but you also augmented all that by, you know, hunting deer and all that by bow. So yeah, you'd have hunters who go out almost every day to, to supplement the food. So they would get way more practice than the typical person nowadays. Thing going. Yep, that makes sense. A lot of the crossbows just had the wind on the back, so it wasn't a matter of like raw strength, it was just do enough rotations. And they usually had a ratcheting mechanism to them as well. 